This episode of Nuff Said is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. The recording has started. <sighs> Hello, uh... Hello, friends. Um, welcome to Super Connectivity. Uh, I am your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and with me, as always, is that uh, blue-eyed bomber from the Burger Pits. Phil, fill me in, Parrot. Welcome, Phil. Um, you know, if you scroll down, you can go down and see the Capes and Lunatics. Uh, last episode, we had a very nice uh, tribute to... Chadwick Boseman, who sadly passed away literally minutes after we recorded last week, um, yeah, last week, which is just you know, it just shocked us. Uh, it's been a week. We've been, we've all been dealing with it, and um, it's been a twenty twenty week. Yeah, it's, uh, it is just, it is just uh, been a week, and um, you can see our full memorial discussion over on Capes and Lunatics. I encourage you to listen and just know we here at Super Connectivity, we mourn the loss. And, um, you know, it is a loss that will haunt us even though, you know, the time we had was so short. It's, it's, it's surprising, but, um, that's the world we live. Uh, let's get into something a little lighter. Yes. Uh, the Batman has COVID. Well, the Batman does have COVID. That okay? So there we go. That's lighter. Um, oh God, yeah, lighter for twenty twenty. So that's actually something that kind of confuses me because I thought they were done with the movie. No, I because they have the trailer. I mean, they're doing the trailer and they don't have the movie done yet. They started it. I'm trying to remember. I thought someone said they had like twenty or thirty percent of it filmed, and then COVID shut the filming down. And then they restarted, and uh, Robert Pattinson uh, tested positive for COVID. Because I think I saw today. I guess they're still going with just without him. Mm -hmm. So, well, yeah, I'm sure Batman's not in every scene. Oh no, because I mean, yeah, you got Catwoman in this thing, Riddler, Penguin. Yeah, here's yeah. So anyway, um, we are all hopeful that um, you know both Robert Pattinson and The Rock. um, uh, A lot of. A lot of DC superheroes are are getting sick right now, and that's ah uh, man, what's going on with this world, uh, Philip? I, I don't know, but I, I did want to talk about the Batman because we do have this this trailer, mm-hmm. and it is very interesting what we're seeing, especially with regard to the Joker, or not the Joker, with the Riddler, because mm-hmm. we're definitely um, definitely seemingly setting up Riddler as the villain of this piece. Although we also have Penguin, and we also have the Court of Owls. And from what we've seen in this, we see the Riddler, who, you know, does not look like any Riddler we've seen before. He's got his face all covered, and it's a very odd look for him, to be be fair. And we see him leaving his riddles and his notes as he straight up kills a guy. Which, you know, granted, you know, I'm sure the Riddler has killed in other incarnations, but it is it is such a ritualistic killing that we see mm-hmm. that it really shocks the senses with what we, what we normally think of with Riddler. We don't think of him as, you know, we think of him as an obsessive, but we don't think of him as, you know, we don't think of him as, as a guy murder, ritualistically murdering people. That doesn't seem like the kind of riddles he would normally do, but we do see that he is killing this person, who is presumably a person of note. Uh, we are, we are guessing an organized crime. I don't know if that was officially stated that this was some organized boss that he was offing, but I have heard that. But it's definitely someone of import. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the, like, at least a, a lot of the modern like Batman tales, like the, if you do it like a year one tale, it's all. I mean, the theme that keeps coming up is, you know, organized crime was having a, uh, you know, just just having its day in Gotham until, you know, the the freaks showed up and it's like, oh, you know, they took it to another level. And yeah, well, you know, but the thing is, and, and this is and this is what I want to get at is 
The Riddler is specifically calling out Batman. Mm -hmm. And the Riddler is specifically leading clues to Batman. Now, maybe this is our traditional, oh, that's because the Riddler is crazy and the Riddler does these clue things and this is his whole shtick and his whole genre and stuff like that. But part of me wonders if there's a deeper story to this. And specifically, I wonder whether or not the Riddler is really the villain in this. Because we do know we're going to be getting a Court of Owls story in this. Mm -hmm. And the entire plot of the Court of Owls is that these are the hidden power brokers behind Gotham. Oh, yeah. And I can imagine a guy like Riddler, who, of course, is sees himself as the super genius, who, of course, cracks that the is this Court of Owls, that they are manipulating things, and probably, you know, felt he should be a part of it. And then I get the feeling, the idea in my mind is he gets rejected by the court. Mm. They don't want him. So he decides, well, then I guess I'll just destroy them. Um, and goes about to gather in this, this loose cannon Batman, who I'm going to imagine. So here are my big predictions. Riddler knows who Batman is. Hmm. And he's, you know, so he's intentionally bringing him in here because he also wants him to find out about, you know, to tie it into the Waynes and the killings and all these things because the Riddler is supposed to be the super genius. He is supposed to be connecting all these things. And he's intentionally guiding Batman down this rabbit hole for him. In short, I'm sure with the idea of taking out this Court of Owls so that now he and perhaps the penguin and other others of the freaks as you said can sort of move in and take over gotham you know i I think that it is going to be this situation where it is he is definitely a villain obviously Mm -hmm. but that he is going to be portrayed in this with questionable motivations because everything he's going to be doing is going to be something that is going to be helping batman solve this crime you know, yeah. and get to who the court is and what they've been doing in the city. Because I'm pretty sure they said this takes place in like Batman's second year. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, I'm sure they'll, they'll probably play it where like, you know, first year he just faced off with like regular, you know, mobsters and stuff. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh no, you know, now we've got this new class of criminal, you know, these, yeah. they're pure evil. Or, or are they? That's what I'm saying. Oh, it's like, yeah. you know, that's the thing with the Riddler. Is he truly evil in this, or is he just, you know, as we've kind of seen the Riddler? You know, that's the thing about the Riddler. It's like, which is why it's like a little jarring to see him be a cold-blooded killer, because really, we have never seen the Riddler ever as a cold-blooded killer. Mm -hmm. We've seen him as a cruel jerk. We've seen him as an arrogant fop. We've seen him in a lot of different ways... But, you know, he's never just been the straight-up shooter guy kind of guy, you know? I mean, it's not like he's worried about whether or not people die because of his schemes, but he's also not out there with the intention of just murder. He's not the Joker, you know? Yeah. He's the Riddler, not the Joker. And um, it's it's interesting what we're going to get. We only have this one short clip, and now we don't know if we're going to have to recast Batman. So it's like, uh, dear Lord. Dear Lord, help us. Um, you know, but I'm I, I'm actually kind of excited about it the more I think about it because I do like that idea in my head of the Riddler trying to guide Batman towards something for the Riddler's own ends. Mm-hmm. You know? And I wonder if we might see, like we saw in Gotham, the idea of the Riddler possibly working with the GCPD as a... Uh, as a forensic pathologist or some other interesting cha- change of his origins, you know, and this idea of this guy who is trying to do good, even as he is contemplating how best to organize crime for the good of all of Gotham. You know, it was interesting, like in the comics, like I think it was like the mid 2000s, he, he kind of reformed for a while and he was kind of like this arrogant, like private detective type. Mm hmm. 
So it would, it would be interesting if maybe he started out like that, maybe. Just, you know, he's just like... Sort of a uh, Sherlock holmes in. Yeah, character. but kind of like telling the cops and the Batman, you need my help, you know. You know, you're, mm-hmm. this city's going to go down in flames thanks to the court if, if you don't, tr- you know, work with me. Yeah. Let me... Well, oh, and, you know, it might even be this kind of thing where he realizes this direct approach mm-hmm. doesn't work. Like, maybe we get a little Edward Nigma scene at the start with him... Coming to Gordon, see, no, you see, there's, there's this group, and it's like, oh, you're just rambling on, Enigma. Just stick to what you do, okay? Do your, you know, who's doing these? You know, give us your, 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 give us your background on this bat. You know, who is this bat person? I mean, give us your analysis. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe Riddler's jealous of Batman because that's what people have said about this trailer. It's like, you know, Batman's like, you know. Well, it looks like he's doing detective work, which is what we all wanted. But two, and you know, he's in the room with the yeah. cops. So the, I don't, even if he's not in an official capacity, it seems like the cops at least respect him enough that, you know, hey, yeah. come in and help. So maybe the Riddler gets jealous of Batman and that's what drives him over the edge. Yeah. You know, or and that, I mean, it's, you know, petty jealousy is such a great motivation. Just ask Hawkeye. Um, no, we'll get there. But at the same time, you know, I w- I would like to see something different with the with the Riddler. I've o- I've always felt the Riddler has so much potential, but that I don't think anyone ever really gives it the strength it needs. You know, mm-hmm. I think you know that was always one of the you know one of the things I always liked about Frank Gorshin's Riddler because Frank Gorshin was the guy who gave us the Riddler suit. Mm-hmm. You know the, the 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 green suit and the purple tie with the question mark. Oh yeah, because at some point he's like, I don't I don't want to wear the spandex anymore. Oh yeah, it looks ridiculous. You know, it, it, um, yeah, it, you sh- you should be uh listening to Kevin Smith's Hollywood Babylon podcast because right mm-hmm. now because they usually they were doing live shows him and his co host uh they were doing live shows but now they, you know they really can't do live shows so uh his uh co host Ralph Garman is like a big expert on like the sixty six Batman so they've mm-hmm. they've been like. Uh, doing commentaries you know they'll take a two-parter do a commentary on it do the next two-parter but yeah so, yeah but that's what his co-host was saying i guess gorshin you know wasn't a fan of the uh the tights so he was the one who suggested the suit so that's why half the time he's wearing the the tights and the mm-hmm. other half he's wearing the suit it was like a kind of a compromise between him and the producers yeah. and but you realize that you know he he got something in that mm-hmm. because that became so iconic for our Riddlers now. That oh, yeah. That's the Riddler we think about is the Riddler in the suit. The Riddler who's not, you know, and if you think about it, the Penguin, the Joker. They all wear suits. They all wear suits. So why doesn't the Riddler wear a suit? You know, it's like, you know, why should he be the guy who looks like the idiot, like Polka Dot Man, <laughs> you know? Um, who of course is in Suicide Squad. That's a good, and that's a good point. I never realized how many fancy dressers Batman's rogues gallery had. Well, they are fancy men. Um, you know, and speaking of fancy men, you know, we're getting the penguin in this. So it's interesting. We've got the penguin and the Riddler, who are probably two of my favorite Batman rogues. Um, you know, and I think in many ways derived from what was done with them in those 60s Batman, where we kind of establish certain ideas about these characters. Um, but that I, I, I think feeds into this idea that they, they were, really much more traditional criminals that they weren't the lunatics like you know like the joker yeah they were they were traditional criminals doing traditional crimes but with a flair yeah you know in the same way that catwoman there's nothing shocking about catwoman she's a cat burglar Mm -hmm. but she says you know what i'll dress up it'll be fun you know i'm wearing a dark cat suit anyway i was gonna say it's dark you know blend in you know yeah, I mean, it's not like they have her in the purple dress. Um, although, you, you gotta love a woman that, that's breaking in, breaking into, uh, you know, second story high rises in a full length purple evening gown. That is. And, and like high heel boots, yeah. Yeah, that is classic Catwoman. Um, in fact, if they ever do, I don't think we've ever seen that callback where they, they go to the party and Selena Kyle's in the purple dress. But that that would be awesome for this film. I would love to see yeah. Selena Kyle infiltrating something in the full length purple dress, and then you know <laughs> rips out of it, goes into her cat suit, and does all the acrobatics or whatever she has to do while she's there. But um, 
it, it's a and it's a glamorous dress. You know, it's not all frilly. It's very sleek. I like that dress. Um, but yeah, but I, I like the idea of you know, and like I, they got. I really hope Richard Kind's in this somewhere because, I, as we've said, the 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 joke, the the penguin Richard Kind facial similarity just bespeaks that this has to be has to be that the, that there's something deeper going on here. And for the cobble pots to be a part of the court, I think, is good, too. Oh, yeah. Or you have just that idea, the other idea, which is that the cobble pots were, but that when the cobble pots lost their fortune, they got ousted. Oh, yeah, because the, the core spin in Gotham, I'd say, was at, like, at least 100 or 200 years. Yeah, and like the, a lot of the modern takes, the cobble pots are old money, old Gotham yeah. money, like the Waynes, yeah. Yeah, but it, but there was this idea, you know, it's always been this idea to me that it would be neat if like one of the one of the penguins motivations is the fact that the cobble pots kind of got screwed over. Oh yeah. by the court and that and that maybe that's what we're going to get here is maybe it's penguin and the riddler conspiring together saying, you know, neither one of us can take them the quarters by ourselves, but you know who could? That crazy nut Bruce Wayne. Yeah. No. You know, because you know they're going to be courting him, but you know he's probably just nuts enough to just destroy them from the inside. Yeah. So they want to essentially bring, which strikes me as, as a brilliant idea, and then, of course, then they are going to divvy up Gotham as the heads of organized crime in the city because they're going to knock out the old organized crime. They're going to knock out the Court of Owls because, of course, you got to think that the Court of Owls and organized crime have to be working together. You know, they have to be in league. So if you take out the Court of Owls, you take out the, 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 the crime bosses, then it's just pickings for, you know, the the, the super freaks. And I, I mean, do you think the court's going to make a full-on appearance in this movie, or are they going to, like, Thanos it and be like, you know, mention them as this big looming threat, but then they save it for, like, the, the next movie, or... You know, I don't think the Court of Owls really works that well as that that big of a threat. I think that's sort of what they want them to be. Mm-hmm. But it, at, at the end of the day, it's a social club for rich weirdos. <laughs> you know, it's they may train assassins and, you know, but is that any different than, you know, just Lex Luthor hiring a bunch of thugs, you know? It's like, I, I don't think, I never feel, so as an example, you know, I'm doing the rewatch of Peggy Carter with um with uh, Maz over on Full Stream Ahead, and you know they have the Arena Club in the second season. Oh yeah, and you know, and these guys are hardcore criminals, but at the same time, their crimes are all white collar crimes. They're oh, like, yeah. yeah, we're going to engineer a stock stock market collapse. We're going to do this. And we're mm-hmm. going to control what technology we're going to release when, and you know, we're going to make sure that we're, you know what what kind of oil, what kind of energy products do we want to put out there? What's our portfolio going to look like? Then what's going to be the most money for us? And to me, that's who the quarter owls is. Mm -hmm. And anything beyond just that money making old money to make more money kind of conspiracy. Once you get into, you know, you don't want to get too, too eyes wide, eyes wide shut with it all, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because that's going to be a distraction in your main goal of controlling the city and making money. And maybe that's sort of it. Maybe that's the Court of Owls' thing, is that they've gotten way too eyes wide shut. <laughs> and that's why Cobblepot and the Riddler are going to knock them off. Now, maybe they, you know, are able to thwart that, and then they get their comeuppance at the hand of the bat, but that, you know, even as they're being taken out, taken away, you know, they're saying, you don't understand, they're still out there, they're still out there. And that's how you do build up that Thanosification, and then you know maybe throwing a Ra's al Ghul in there. Why not? Uh. Why not? Because why, why wouldn't they? I, I've never understood if they were supposed to be. You know, they've all got shadows and assassins and leagues of whatever. You know, mm-hmm. I could I could see there being some crossover there, and I think that would be good. But I, I like the idea of whatever's happening here. It's intentional, and it is leading to something beyond just the Riddler trying to make it easier for Batman to catch him. Mm. I think that if they're going to do this, it's going to be he, because he's addressing it to the Batman. He wants the Batman's attention. And if he wants the Batman's attention, 
it's got to be because he wants the Batman to do something. And so I, I find that an interesting thing. Um, moving along in the idea of Gotham, um, I did want to talk a little bit about Harley Quinn. Yes. And um, what we might get in season three. Because, you know, um, it's, you know, Gotham, I, I think it's going to get a season three. I think the first two seasons were very popular. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I've heard nothing mm-hmm. but good things pretty much from. And, you know, and there are some, inter- they, they tied up the whole thing. So if that was the last Harley Quinn, I don't think we're going to be crying over what happened next. Yeah. But I think that there's enough that is there. That would be interesting to explore. Like, you know, does uh, the penguin's nephew become the new penguin? You know, which I think is a very real possibility of something they're going to build out in that story, you know? Mm -hmm. Because they did sort of, because they do kill the penguin in this, which is one of those weird things is just, you know, that, oh, yeah, they just killed off a lot of people in this. And the idea of this young Cobblepot coming up as the new penguin makes for an interesting thing and then makes for another interesting aspect of it with the idea of Harley Quinn keeps on getting these enemies who are teenage boys <laughs> um, which which for what it's worth probably is its own meta commentary on all the teenage boys who really like Harley Quinn <laughs> oh I, I love the Damien episode now oh, you're my you're my nemesis <laughs> yes well you know and, the, and that's the thing we got to bring Damien back because he's obviously getting short shrift in the comics. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's no room. And, you know, the thing about Damien, I like Damien expressly because he's a brat. Well, I was going to bring it up. You know, on Capes, you know what I was thinking? I, I don't know if it works as well because he is like a 13-year-old boy. I think he's 13 now. 13-year-old boy. I think they tried the superior Spider-Man him, like, attitude-wise, and I don't know if it mm-hmm. works with a 13-year-old kid. No, well, I like I said, to me, every time I read him... I read him as Teen Titans Go Robin. As this guy who's just very, very confident in his understanding of the world. I don't think he really understands the world, at least when it comes to social niceties and stuff. Because, I mean, he was raised with assassins and, you know, but he was raised, yeah. basically raised by Ra's al Ghul and Talia until the age of 10. Batman didn't even know he was alive until they showed up. And he's like, oh, hi, father. Yes, you know, um, yeah, and obviously that's that's an interesting aspect of it. But I do think that they, I think they leaned into that 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 type of Robin, that type of arrogant Robin, and this kind of you know I'm the best at what I do kind of Robin. Well, I always um, I always joke that he's better with Dick Grayson, but he is because like when he first became Robin, that's when they all thought Bruce Wayne was dead, and when Dick Grayson mm-hmm. became Batman, and that. And the contrast was the opposite because it this because when Dick Grayson was Robin, you had a more lighthearted Batman, and you had like a darker Robin. So the contrast yeah. was the same; it was just reversed. Yeah, but um, yeah. So, but I'd like to see more of Damien in that. I'd like to see Damien and and a teenage penguin sort of squaring off. That would be fun for me. I'd like. I'd love to see Kite Man back. Um, mm-hmm. You know, his heart got broke by, uh, by, by, by that, but I'd like to see what he does next. I'd like to see what, oh gosh, man. Kite man, yeah. Yeah, I, I hope he doesn't wind up dating Punchline. Um, oh. they gotta bring up Punchline now. Um, and just, you know, uh, by the way, like I said, I, I like that. I love the idea of Punchline going to Arkham. I hope that's not going to be, no, this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted her in Arkham because that's part of our big plan for the Joker War. Ha, 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 ha. I don't want that. But um, It would be funny if they, like, played her for humor in the Carly Quinn series. Just, you know, Harley, the whole episode would be like, copyright infringement. Yes, it would be be very funny. And there's lots of things they could do. One of the things I really think they need to do Hmm. is they need to cross over with Powerless. They need a story where, you know, and it writes itself, is Clayface has to impersonate Van Wayne ah! <laughs> to break into Wayne Tech. I don't think I can do it, but I will try. <laughs> I will be this Van Wayne. I am an actor. <laughs> yes, I will. I, I just want to, I want to see that. But more to the point, what I really want to see, because if you will recall, Ron... 
played by Ron Funches in Powerless, <laughs> yes. was an Atlantean. Yes. And Ron Funches is is King Shark. And we know in the last episode that King Shark got married, but him and his wife agreed to have an open relationship. I want a whole storyline where King Shark finds out who his wife is is opening up her relationship with and it's Ron from Atlantis. And I want to see a Ron Funches battle between Ron from Powerless and um King and Shark. King Shark underwater, you know, Ron using all kinds of crazy powerless tech, King Shark just using his 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 his, his, his raw ingenuity and the two of them just throwing down for the hand of the good girl and, uh, and then, of the hammerhead woman. And, then in and the, I just think that is going to be that is going to be epic. And then in the middle of the fight, she just runs off with Black Manta or something. Her and Kite, kite, uh, kite Man. Maybe. Oh, oh or Black Manta. Black Manta is good. Black Manta is good. I mean, I mean if you, you want to keep it in the water, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. So, so is Ron Funches typecast as like a sea dweller now? Apparently he is a, well. He is an Atlantean. So DC yeah. says we need an Atlantean. Well, of course we need Ron Funches. I'm a little disappointed he was not in the Aquaman movie. Now, seriously, he could have did like the voice of like the CGI octopus or something. Yeah. Well, you know. Oh, oh. Uh, what's the name of the octopus in? Uh, I, I forget. But that could have been. Is, was it Pongo or something? He would have been a great Pongo. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, Ron Funches, he's awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I just think that, that I think, because here's the thing. I do think Powerless and the Powerless universe and the Harley Quinn universe kind of sync up nicely. They both have really like open, secret, superheroic worlds and like Legion of Doom kind of stuff where it's very straightforward. You know, we're the Legion of Doom. This is Lex Luthor. This is the whole thing. And I, I kind of feel like that, that is, that is a thing where they, they do have, they have the same attitude and the same view of a superheroic world and superheroic bureaucracy. You know, I mean, oh, I, I love, I love the whole Lex and the Legion of Doom thing. You know, they'll basically do any evil deed, but they won't work with Doctor Psycho because he uses the C word. Well, yeah. Well, I think he's also just kind of, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Season it, two, you yeah. see what Doctor Psycho's up to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Doctor Psycho is 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 is, <laughs> is delightful. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, just all all over the place. I felt that. Um, I felt that there was a lot of strength in the stories we got in Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. I very much want to see more of that. And I want to see, like I said, and to me, you got Ron Funches, you got Alan Tudyk, you got to do something with power. You've got to reference that. Mm -hmm. And like I say, having Van Wayne show up is just, and then Ron Funches, or not Ron, then Alan Tudyk impersonates him. I do think that is going to be perfect. That is going to be great. Um, how they do that, and and uh, it would be awesome. So, so you <sighs> so you agree with me and Lilith that that animated series is better than live action Harley Quinn? Um, well, yeah, yeah, the live action Harley Quinn was not well. Okay, the Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey was just it, that was a DC movie. That you know, it yeah. seemed like it was. It, it came in late. They rushed it together. They yeah. just shoved a bunch of scenes in. You know, so that was. It just that, yeah, that, you, that film was a mess. You could tell they put some thought into the animated series. Yeah, well, yeah, well, you know what it is is they what they did is they said, okay, this is a no rules universe. Yes, you know we want to kill the penguin, we can kill the penguin. Mm-hmm. We want to do this or that or the other, we can do all this that, that this or that or the other. We want to make you Bane, know we want to make Bane a huge joke. We can do <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly, and and they embraced it and they ran with it and. In their own way, they did kind of similar to what Teen Titans Go does for the kids set, you know? Yeah, but this is more adult. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But they said, you know, we're just going to make jokes about it, and we're going to point out the tropes, and we're going to be silly, and we're going to have fun with it, and nothing matters, you know? Nothing matters, because if nothing matters, then everything is going to be a lot more fun. 
if we work with it in that, it's going to go places that you don't think it's going to go yet, and we're going to get it there. You know, is this the bat cave? This is where you f bats. I don't f bats. <laughs> he totally f bats. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but, but uh, that's what I said. I mean, yeah, Margot Robbie's there already. But I'd love. To, I mean, I would love for them to give Kaylee Cuoco a shot at live action Harley Quinn. I mean, she oh she nails yeah, it on I the mean, animated side. I mean, you know, I I mean, I'm sure she'd be great at it. But you know, that's the thing about Harley Quinn. I actually like Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm gonna like Suicide Squad Harley Quinn. I love the new Harley Quinn outfit with the pants. Mm-hmm. You know, I like that she's finding her own design and her own character. I really felt that that was, like, the worst thing about Harley Quinn and Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey was just the that everything was defined in relationship to the Joker, but also in kind of a bad way, I kind of felt. Well, even the first Suicide Squad, I mean, she, you know, it was the Joker stuff, too. Well, you know what it is, is... In Suicide Squad, yes, but also in Suicide Squad, the Joker actually is shown to be, you know, he goes and he busts her out. and He does all the things he says he's going to do. Well, he's actually shown, too. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then when we get to Harley Quinn, there is that, oh, this is my Joker, this is my pudding, and then it's like, well, let's break down what you saw, let's really look at it, let's analyze it, and we actually get the evolution of the character. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like in Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, it was, you know, we don't really get much. We get the eventual, we get that there was a breakup, the Joker's not even in it, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, and everyone's way too obsessed with them and knows too much of their lore. And it's, I, I think that didn't work in the live action design, there was, you know? Yeah, that's why, that's why I said when we reviewed that movie, I'm like, there's too much of that stuff, and then they, they could have taking some of that time and fleshed out some of the other characters more. Like, I wanted yeah, to see any more of the other characters. Yeah, Black Canary and Huntress. I wanted to see way more with them. Yeah, and Black... I mean, I still don't know what the whole story is with her. She has a singing power. And... Okay. You know, that that's literally all we got from her. I mean, they they could have done so much with her, because, I mean, even in some versions, she's like a legacy character. Like, her mother was the first Black, uh, Black Canary, and then she's the Black mm-hmm. Canary. And they uh, hint at that. Yeah. They hint at that, and then they don't do anything with it. They don't establish anything, exactly. and it just it it really it really felt. I mean, they could have did a whole it thing. It really felt like he had short shrift. They could have did a whole thing where Montoya was like, "Oh, I remember your mother," you know. Yeah. Well, you know, and as people have said, that it would have been cool if it had been Har- the Birds of Prey versus Harley Quinn. Yes. You know. Where she's kind of the antagonist, but, you know, they didn't want to make her an antagonist. They wanted her to be the protagonist. And I don't know why they want that. It's like uh, being the antagonist, that's still a perfectly good role. But anyway, they, but we'll see how she does in Suicide Squad. I I think as, they, they want Harley Quinn these days, especially in those movies, to kind of be like their Deadpool. Yeah, you keep on saying that, but I don't know. I mean, I don't. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't agree with it fully either, but I, I think that's what yeah. they want. Yeah, I don't, first off, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I think that, that the Kylie Coco Gwenpool show maybe has more of that. Like, if we were to ever get an animated Deadpool series, it might seem a lot like the Harley Quinn series. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not married to the idea that that's, yeah, I mean, that may be what they want to do theoretically in the long term. But I don't know if they are achieving that. Let me put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Anyway, but uh, yeah, so that's yeah, that's Harley Quinn. So that's 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 that 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 is the good and the bad and the ugly of Harley Quinn. And that's like the last thing that DC really has going for it right now because you know, as we've said, we've got freaking Batman has COVID, Black Adam has COVID. We're gonna eventually someday get Wonder Woman eighty four. That's done. That's in the can. Yep. Um. I don't know how I'm, 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 I don't know what I feel about it. And I have reason to think I'm not going to like it. Hmm. You know, I have reason to think that the way they're bringing Steve Trevor back is going to be weird. I think there's going to be a big portion of this where it's going to feel a lot like the Amadeus show in Incredible Hercules arc where the gods 
were trying to like control man and and like create a mirror universe of them the way they could control everything. Um, you know, I like I you know it would be interesting. You know, it's I've been watching in I've been watching Casually Comics and they did a whole breakdown of all the different versions of Cheetah over the years, and I kind of liked the Cheetah who was just the woman in the costume. Mm. You know, the person who was just kind of a kind of a petty lady who got mad at Wonder Woman for getting all of the things. Although I do also like that they're introducing the archaeologist angle to it. You know, but then that makes me wonder if, like, you know, Diana's going to laugh at her because she doesn't understand anything about Amazons. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things that could happen in that. But um, I was not impressed with the Cat Lady CGI. And that's, in a, in a way, that's kind of where I'm like, you know, maybe they should have gone with the Cat Lady suit. You know? I, again, it was a trailer. It was like two seconds. Maybe that was just a bad couple mm. seconds of it. Yeah. I don't know. I felt the tail did not. The tail looked too fluffy. Mm. Maybe I don't know. And maybe that's a nitpick. But I or, just or maybe they can clean it up some more before. It, uh. Yeah, I mean it's possible. I mean, hey, I thought Batman was done, but apparently it's like not even a third done yet. So you know, yeah, we'll yeah. see what happens. Um, yeah, but you know, but we'll see what's going on with that. It's it's all a lot. There's a lot of things going out there in the universe. Um. Uh, I did. I only have a couple more comics to talk about. I did finish Empire, mm. which was neat because it kind of really does tie directly into the Fantastic Four book because literally it has actual panels from one put into the next one. Yes. Because you know we see Spider Man saying, "Oh, don't get grass stains on my uh, on my thing," and there is going to be a Fantastic Four Fallout coming after this, so that is going to be interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. What do you think the fallout's going to be? Because I thought, because uh, in, in Empire, it's number six. It almost seemed like they were like, "Oh, is one of these Fantastic Four members going to die?" But nobody died, so it's like, "What do you?" No, think? no, 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 no. No, I think it's going to be you know Reed and Sue retiring, oh. and I think that's part of what the whole thing is like. You know, just turn off all my pain sensors. Turn off everything that would keep me from pushing all the way through. Mm-hmm. And I think we might get some long-term effects from that. Like, maybe she's having, like, she's got, like, you know, I need to step back for a bit. Mm-hmm. You know? And I get the feeling it's going to be, you know, um, you know, maybe Sky and Johnny and Ben and, you know, the kids or something. You know, it's mm-hmm. not going to be four anymore. Or it's going to be something else. It's, something's going to be in this that's going to be... Slightly different. It's going to be a change up of, of the team. Maybe we're going to get uh, Elijah back. Or do you think? Um, or do you think maybe Johnny stays in space? Oh well, I guess he could. You know, uh, you know, yeah. Why not? Johnny can stay in space. It's like the, like um, the King King's bodyguard or something. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, then he's got his wife back on Earth with Sky. You know. <laughs> And well, she's not from Earth. She could go with him, you know. Yeah, that's true too. That's true too. And maybe yeah, so. Maybe that's that. Maybe maybe Scott. You know, maybe it's you know Sky and Johnny go off into space. Oh no! And, S- and Sky. And Sh- I was gonna say Sky and Johnny go off into space, and oh no! Look who shows up, Elijah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We'll see what goes on with Elijah. I thought it was interesting in the Fantastic Four, where because we do get this thing. Where what is it? Nakia, the the young scroll, impersonates Sky. Yes, and asks her. You, you know, uh, she told you a secret. What was it? And and um, and Alicia says, "Oh, that's you I know, pr- I promised I wouldn't tell." Yep. Which was really really cool that she is keeping the secret. You know, whatever it is, mm-hmm. which gets us all wondering what was the secret. You know, because clearly she knew who Alicia Masters was. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it makes sense in the sense that if she has every memory of the scrolls, she has every memory of Lija. Mm. And within that, you have that basically whatever it was that the scrolls did to have you totally become someone else. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if they gave her actual memories, but I mean, they, yeah. you know, when they revealed Lija, they, they showed she underwent like all this psychological yeah. training and they taught her basically everything about Alicia, you know? Yeah. So she knows who Alicia is in that sense. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I find that, you know, so there could be this bond with her in the sense that she knows who Alicia is because she knows who Elijah is 
because Elijah was Elisha. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and maybe for scrolls, it's a weird thing when you meet who you become, you know, mm-hmm. because becoming someone can be a very intimate process, you know? So it's, 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 I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited to see what they're going to do with the Fantastic Four, but I'm certain it's going to be, yeah, Reed and Sue are going to retire or step back. And that's the thing. I don't think anyone's like going to be gone. But I think Reed's going to say, yeah, let's just sit in the lab. I can, I want to tinker in my lab and you rest. You know, and we're just going to be a family with you, me, and, and the, and the kids. And they're all going to be down there. And then it's maybe Ben's got to form a new team. Um, which would be interesting if it's Ben, if, if Johnny's out in space and it's just Ben trying to form a new Fantastic Four to go on base. And basically maybe then it's like, okay, well, look, we're not really superheroes. We're going to be explorers. So let me get people to help me exp- do whatever Reed's going to build for me to fly and do our, our astronauting. So that's what I'm going to do. And he'll get someone for that. He'll get, you know, Ant-Man or maybe, we'll, hey, who knows? Maybe we'll get Sharon Venter back. Oh, I would love Sharon Ventura back, you know. Good old she. Although, man, I don't know how Elijah's going to feel about, or Alicia's going to feel about that. Bringing your ex back into the <laughs> picture. Oh, yeah. But someone really needs to tell her that, oh, yeah, we found a uh, chemical that will turn you back into human for a day. Because um, she yeah. might want that. Exactly. You should call. You should write. You should let her know. Um yeah. Oh, hey, you probably didn't read it. But you, did you read Miles Morales eighteen? No, I did not. I think no, you I would not. like it. I mean, I mean, Miles is fighting in, like some imposter, but the stuff with the like, they have a bunch of outlawed stuff in this. Mm-hmm. Like it seems like there's agents coming for Miles' oh. parents, and then uh, but no, I forgot about outlawed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, at his school, I mean, there's like agents there, like at his school, and they're trying to make all the kids sign a pledge that you know they they pledge to make any. Here, I pledge to make any administrator aware of any students engaged in so-called super heroics and, mm-hmm. you know, and gank and a bunch of the kids are like, this is crap. No, we're not going to, you know, say so like, no. they like do like a sit in and like, oh, yeah, cool. the, I don't think they're even letting the agents out the door and they, you know, the, you know, the agent in charge, she's just like, okay, arrest those kids. She's like, cause they even call in some like congresswoman who like is like active in the community. Cause like. The, the students won't move from the door, so the agent's just like, okay, arrest those kids, you know, gank and all them. And mm-hmm. Then she's like, you know what? If the principal or the congresswoman get in our way, arrest them too. Oh. So, yeah. And then, like I said, agents look like they're coming for Miles' parents. So, yeah, stuff's, it's really getting nasty in Miles' world. I mean, that sounds interesting, you know? Mm-hmm. You know what book I did pick up this week? Is, I haven't gotten the chance to read it yet. I oh, up- yeah. Okay. Okay, Phil, I'm going to give you one guess. Why did I pick up this book? Because you read the other ones? Well, yes, yes. But, the, but you know, I wasn't committed to it 100%, and it's been a while, and I picked this up. Why did I pick it up? It's obvious, if you think about it, what what was in this book that I said, I have to buy it? Uh, Who's in this book that said I had to buy it? Bullseye? No. <laughs> I don't follow Bullseye. Uh, why? Who else had a big part? Oh, um. It's not a big part. Armadillo? No. The Rhino. Fancy Dan! Oh, Fancy Dan, yes. Fancy Dan and Ox. Yes. Oh, I love that. I just, just, I, so I don't even know if they're in this book at all. I don't even know why they're hanging out with Rhino. I mean, they're part, oh, look, they're, the- they're part, 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 uh, part of the villains hanging out with the hood, and then Fancy Dan is the last line of the book, so. Yeah, yeah, and I and I I, I really want to see why is Hawkeye one of them now. So I'm excited for this book. I didn't get the chance to read it yet, but I'm going to be reading it this weekend, and I'm excited for Freefall to find out why Hawkeye got the respect of Fancy Dan. So, oh, do you want me to spoil anything for you? Eh, you can spoil some stuff. Oh, I well, I mean, after last issue, yeah, uh, Bullseye, you know, went out in uh, the Ronin costume and. You know, he's like killing people and, you know, he basically tells Hawkeye, he's like, yeah, you know, the hood, you know, hired me to, you know, smear the name of Ronin. So, you know, you're not going to be able to use that identity anymore. Mm-hmm. So, and it's like, oh, you know, he's going to, you know, the hood's going to reveal to the world that you were Ronin. And then Hawkeye's like, that's all right. Because Hawkeye decides to just, I guess, tell everybody. And then, uh, oh, no, because uh, the hood's like, 
what's he has like a three million dollar bounty or something on him or mm-hmm. so uh yeah hawkeye goes to the bank uh the hood owns <laughs> steals steals the hood three million <laughs> and then uh well, he throws the bag down and he because like all these villains are sitting there with the hood and he's like okay you guys can split up this money if you just like don't get in the way while me and the hood go at it <laughs> so so they're fighting yeah and then uh Hawkeye opens the bag. There's no money in there. There's a bunch of de- there's a bunch of like demons or something in there. Uh, oh, because uh, yeah, they take care of like the, his hood, his actual like mystical hood. Can Hawkeye's like, yeah, I got that from Count Nefaria. He didn't like the way you ended things with his daughter. <laughs> there you go. You turn without your magic cloak. It turns out you're just another dumbass with delusions of grandeur, just like me. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, so, hey, dumbass, that's my line. Exactly. Yeah. So Hawkeye takes him down without the hood. Hawkeye takes him down, and then, uh, you know, so and then after the battle, the, the rest of the crooks show up, and like, was it Tombstone? I think says, "Let's kill him." And uh, yeah, Fancy Dan says, "Now nah, let him go." Oh no, Ox says, "He says, says no, let him go, Ox. He's one of us." He's talking about Hawkeye. He says, "He's one yeah. of us now, even if he doesn't know it yet." Yeah. Well, there you go. It's it's interesting. And, you know. Hawkeye started out a villain, man. So I don't know if this is the last issue because they, I mean, they kind of. Uh, I don't know if it's the end of the book or the end of the arc because they really don't say anything about being the last issue or not. So. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll we'll know in a month. I guess. Yeah. Does have a the end at the end of it though. Hmm. Yeah, and maybe it's like ah, uh, you know, maybe we'll bring it back in a couple of months and see where we go left next. You know. Um. Yeah. So I mean. A good week for comics all around, oh, I have yeah. to say. Um, I liked what we got. I, I liked how Empire ended. You know, I liked that. Oh, man, that was kind of cool with uh, the, the, the door. And, you know, when uh, the plant thing tries to open up all of the gamma power and it says, what is oh, this? What's she this Hulk, door? Yeah. <laughs> and then she, I was a little mad she comes back as, you know, still grunty She-Hulk. I want my I want my old school gen. Well, back, I you mean, know? you I knew you were complaining. Oh, magic cure all fixed it in two seconds. I mean, so well, at yeah. least it wasn't that. You know, I well, I don't mind. I don't I, I don't like the idea of the hammer, and especially just that. Well, wait, it's the evil Cody because I knew the Cody were evil mm-hmm. or the Coati, whatever they call themselves now. Um, I knew they were evil, and so I knew well that evil hammer that can't be good that she has an evil hammer that's got her brain working so um you know um but i would like to get classic jen back you know i'd like her to i'd I'd like to see maybe let's let's go to the crossroads of the mind let's see how all the hulks are dealing with inside jen's mind you know plus i don't know maybe al maybe al your friend al ewing couldn't like fix she hulk because like you know she she is in the avengers book that jason aaron's writing so maybe it's like you know i can't mess with jason aaron's character over there yeah yeah, who knows? We're gonna have to see because we're getting the immortal She Hulk coming soon. Yep, I'm looking forward to that. I always, I always buy She Hulk books. You know, yeah. Every oh, time yeah. That she gets a new one, I always pick them up because I love me some She Hulk. And I, and I just wonder if they did the whole thing with you know dumbing her down just because they want like a classic Hulk, but Immortal Hulk isn't like classic yeah. Hulk right now, so they. But see, I don't think she works in the dumbed down version. I know. I miss the John Byrne. You Hulk. Know, I miss the John Byrne She Hulk. <laughs> Well, you know, I like the fact that they did show that all of that it's that she can't speak, but her brain is still active. Yes. I'd love to see more of that, you know, more of how she is in her head, but she can't communicate. That it's like, you know, as uh, as they say in, in the Hulk, you know, it's like looking through at the world through a dirty ashtray kind of thing, you know, and yes. I, I like that. I like that concept, you know. um, I'm looking forward to whatever they do. Uh, looking forward to Patsy Walker and the new Iron Man coming out next month. Yes. I think um, it might, might... Is it this month, maybe? Uh, yeah. It might it, yeah. I actually forgot to tell them to put it on my pull list, but... Love those Alex Ross covers. You know that. Yeah. I'm a sucker for an Alex Ross cover. Oh, yeah. Maybe when we're done, I'll look up the date. I'll let you know what the, what week it's coming out. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a, it's a good week for comics. I, I like that. I like that at least Marvel's coming back strong. Yes. I'm loving all my indies that I've been picking up. As I said, I got three indies this week mm-hmm. uh, from Dark Horse, IDW, and Image. So you know, I'm 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 feeling the comic book rebirth. I'm feeling the comic book renaissance. It was hard going through COVID, but I'm glad we're back now. And um, 
Yeah. And that's about all I got, Phil. You got anything else you want to talk about this week? No, I think that's it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got enough. I think we got enough. And so, uh, you know, Philip, um, I know uh, you and I were both wearing headphones. Um, I don't think either of us were actually wearing tweaked audio headphones. Um, but they are a sponsor of the show, and they do make high-quality headphones. Yes. So I'm cheap. These are actually my work headphones. I didn't have to pay for them. That is literally why I use them. Because they basically use all my stuff from work that I just brought home, and I just I just use that for my podcasting. Because why should I invest money in podcasting? But you, you're listening to this. You may want to invest in better headphones, and if you do, you don't even have to invest that much because you can go to tweakedaudio.com, use the coupon code Southgate to save money on what you buy. Likewise. If you're looking for something else to get a deal on, you can go over to huntakiller.com where uh, Michelle Gray needs your help to solve a cold case, get that escape room delivered to your house once a month, and use the coupon gold Southgate to not pay too much for that either. Um, scroll down to where things, click on the Amazon link, go to Amazon. There you can buy Pod Life the Book, written by the good folks at Southgate Media, and uh, anything else you, your heart's desire. It's not going to cost you a dime helps us out a bit. And uh, if anyone does anything like that and they'd like to talk to you about their purchases or just talk to you about anything, how can they do that, Phil? Uh, the easiest way to get a hold of me or anybody else, uh, email capesandlunatics at gmail.com or the voicemail 614-382-2737 and we're all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Get to our links at... Oh, Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. Yeah, all the links are right there. there. All of them. So that saves you some time. Yeah. Anyway, and hey, if you want to write to me in that old-fashioned email way where Miles and Posman said, do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter as I look for something to live tweet. Maybe it's going to be Amphibia. I don't know yet. At Charlie Esser. That's C-H-A-R-L-I-E. Yes, S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For what, Maz? For quality. Bing. Thank you, Maz. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you once again for listening to Super Connectivity. Please super connect with us again next week. And always remember, Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. <sighs> Beautiful stuff. Oh yeah. The second just when we're doing the outro music. Good night.